you know, stand-up comedy A, B, C, D, E, genius uh, verging, on in, verging on insanity. In the next hour, we've got Alan de Botton coming in. Yes. And he talks about sane insanity. He says um, it is insane to try and be sane as a human being, and it's much much more sensible to try, try and achieve um, insanity with a little with a dash of sanity in there. I think with stand up also you want to be you want to be the person that's on the outside so you're kind of talking about the normal things that people are going through but then you want you're that kind of weirdo on the outside who's trying to look at it from a different way so you're not trying to be sane or maybe you're trying to be kind of more logical than everyone is. So Ben Elton's Ben Elton's here tomorrow mm. and he's embarking upon his first stand up tour for over a decade. Oof. Now he's got plenty of ammo. Um, yes. in his magazine. And, you know, I think Ben could probably go on tour without writing anything specifically because when he just talks... He, he's one of those um, stand-ups, isn't he, that he, he almost delivers a sermon. And if, yeah. if it's funny, it, it, you know, all the better. But it's so fascinating what he has to say and how he says it anyway yeah. that you were compelled. So how much does an audience like to be educated whilst being made to laugh? I think... Do you know what? I can honestly say my audience will leave and they will have learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they will have learned absolutely nothing. Really? Yeah. And but I, I always I have the view that like if it's funny and they have a good night, that's that's what I'm there for. And I, I kind of like, I people are like, are you going to talk about Brexit? And I'm like, I don't think people want to hear my views on Brexit. I think people come out. I I almost enjoy like being as kind of a pointless as possible with the things I talk about. I enjoy. P picking on the things that aren't the big issues. But uh, you can't be as pointless as possible because if people are happy to, um, to to stay in your company for a couple of hours and pay for the pleasure, then it, they, everything must have a point to it. Well, I think people enjoy, you know, people enjoy... I think people think a lot more about the pointless little things in life Therefore, than they they're not, do. Therefore, they're not pointless. Therefore, they're not pointless. Do See, you know what? I'm actually... Much more of a sage than I thought. <laughs> my, my, my work's much more important than I thought. So, um... Let me ask you this. So, so mm. I love Brassic. Have you seen Brassic on Sky One? Uh, no, I haven't. Right, no. you have to watch Brassic okay. episode four tonight. Are you, do you have Sky at home? I do have Sky okay. at home. Okay. Well, I can't believe you've not watched Brassic. Then it's the funniest thing ever on telly. Ever. Okay. It's episode two, right? Yep. It's episode four tonight. But every uh, all six are available on demand. Yep. One six one hours. Funniest thing ever. Okay. I'm ever, Josh. Ever, it. ever. Yeah. Episode two has the best sight gag I've ever seen on screen in any movie or TV show. I'm very excited about. Okay. This. You know the chandelier moment in Only Fools yep. and Horses. Uh, you know the 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 prat fall in Only Fools and Horses. Yep. Forget them. Okay, forget this it. This is amazing. Forget. I, I want to say what it's about, but yeah, I can't because it will give it away. Yeah, yeah you but, can't describe a sight gag yeah, as well. But it? the best thing about Brassic is it doesn't have any jokes in it, right? Right. Now I, I don't think you do jokes, but you make people laugh. So how do you do that? So, so and lots of people, lots of comedians do this, don't they? Yeah, I think you know, forget the joke, but you can still make people laugh. I think it's the observation. I think it's the personality. I think I remember Eddie Izzard saying that people are kind of when they come and see you. A lot of the thing, they're just spending, they like, like you as a person, they find you an amusing kind of person, they want to spend time in your company. And I think if I came on and started doing one-liners, it wouldn't feel like me. And I think the best stand-up comedy, you feel like you're talking to the person and you feel like they're having a conversation with you. So how far are you in? Is you, we had um, John Sims on yesterday. Yeah. And John Sims is in Macbeth at the Chichester F Festival Theatre mm. uh, from the end of September to the end of October. Now, he's got to learn... He is Macbeth, right? Yeah. He's got to learn all of that. And it's, he's on in about a minute from now. <laughs> and I said, how much do you know? And uh, he said, I think I know most of it. Yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, one person's most is another person's almost yeah, yeah, every, yeah. almost all. And other, another person's not really any at all, to be honest. How much of yours do you know now? Your uh, Macbeth I, heading into a new tour. I know all of it. Because the thing is, when you've written it and you've slowly worked it up, it, you, you learn it through osmosis by doing it. You're not learning a script that's there. So it's really easy. I always thought, like, how does a stand-up comedian remember 80 minutes of material? But it's actually the easiest thing you can remember because you've, you've been with that material for a year and a half. You've been changing it. You've been working on it. And so you learn it through osmosis. There's no kind of... Walk, there's no sitting around or walking around with a hairbrush pretending it's a microphone. Trying to... <laughs> but you must have done that to know that. <laughs> well, you know, I, that's an example I've just picked out of the air, Chris. But... Do, you, do you have a hairbrush? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen my hair. No, my girlfriend's got a hairbrush. And I, I would... I... <laughs> uh, tickets to go and see Josh Whittacombe, joshwhittacombe.com. His tour starts, UK's uh, Autumn's tour, a uh, bit much, uh, starts Thursday, 3rd of October in New York. Why is it called a bit much? I just thought it's a, it's a phrase I say, it's a bit much, isn't it? A bit much. A bit much. Other tours have been called... 
Other tours I've done have been called, oh my God, what do I do now? There was one called The Further Adventures of Josh Widdicombe, which was a strange title. Even bit, bit much is quite confident. I like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 a bit much. Yeah, a bit much. Yeah, I'm all right. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky.